Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about senior front-end developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, thank you for posting this video. I've gained some great knowledge from your videos. Well, thank you. I'm happy that my content is giving you some value. Could you please make a video explaining the technology you would expect a front-end developer to have? Specifically the elements of JavaScript. I've been a front-end developer for about four years and I cannot seem to become a senior developer. Well, I wrote back to the subscriber like two seconds ago and I told him the secret that I will tell you. And the secret is that nobody knows what a senior front-end developer looks like. No one. I've never ever ever felt that I've talked to a person that I would consider to be a real senior front-end developer. There are absolutely specialists, many specialists. There are especially in the performance space there are people who are extraordinarily gifted and have a deep understanding of browser APIs or how to performance optimize load times or user experiences and think all things like that. But see, these people are worth absolutely nothing to the average company because the average company does not need someone who is a master of performance optimizing absolutely everything when the thing that they're most of the time struggling with is to just keep the legacy code at bay and the ever increasing size of their JavaScript from going getting out of hand. You see, it's great to know how to performance optimize things, but it doesn't really help when you get to that fundamental problem where even if you do actually lazy load things and you actually find ways of making optimizations, it doesn't actually make the situation all that better because you can still not beat the, well, it's supposed to be one second minimum load time, but the average, if you go and look at the averages of the internet it's actually five seconds per website you see even with performance optimizations you will not be able to beat an ever-increasing st stream of JavaScript and every single company has that problem it's uh, I, it, I I think that the, this is probably the one of the most telling problems of all development and all of humankind. No model that you create will be able to f face off against a population or a bunch of JavaScript the size uh, of in of sufficient size you will not be able to solve that problem the problem is it's only possible to solve through reducing the reducing the size of the problem itself and th see this is the benefit of and in many cases the sad part about front-end development since nobody really knows how to deal with this the bar for being a senior front-end developer is a lot lower than the bar for being a senior backend developer. I'm just going to go out and say it. I have been on both sides of this fence for a few years now. I people have looked at me to as being a experienced at the very least. I wouldn't call myself a senior, but I know what a senior backend developer looks like and I know the difference that they make in a project and I know what people call a senior front-end developer and I know how embarrassingly little they actually their experience actually brings to the table above the knowledge of and this is the key thing the knowledge of the tools that we use that is what the vast majority of the industry is referring to when they talk about the senior front-end developer. The bar for a senior front-end developer is for most situations that you know the right tools. In other words, you know how an SBA works. You can pick your stack here. You can be a React developer, Vue, or Angular. It doesn't really matter. If you've worked, and this is the, this is the fun part about this, you will learn how to do this in just one or two years. It won't take you all that long to get to a basically senior level experience within these tools based on I'm saying senior a little bit ironically now a senior level in the eyes of the front-end community or the front-end uh, role 
that's what it's gonna what it's gonna take you to get to that level. And then other tooling such as bundlers, such as Webpack, for example, Node, NPM, and so forth, and being able to set up a basic server so that you actually can do some API calls and stuff like that. Uh, all of these sort these sorts of things are going to be expected of you if you're supposed to be a quote unquote senior developer. But that's where it kind of stops. Uh, if we're just talking in this case about JavaScript, we, there's of course things related to CSS and CSS and JS, and you need to of course know about responsive design and mobile first and all of these sorts of things that are related to the UI level. But if you think about this, this is practically what this is the base requirements for anyone to even be a front-end developer. There's tools that I have mentioned here, there's nothing magical about them, there's no, there's nothing really that in any way indicates that this person that I, you know, these tools, if you know these tools then you're a senior developer, because that's not, it's the same thing that the juniors needs to know. But these are where, that's where the focus is, that you have enough years of experience or things of that nature with these tools. That's what's going to dictate if you're a senior. But if you look at what the back-end developers call a senior on average, well, a back -end, if you're a senior back-end developer, usually you are capable of leading the entire software team. Usually you are capable of ensuring that a project stays on track, that it goes the right direction, that it doesn't turn into absolute shit. You are more than just your tools. But for front-end, that's just not the case. It's, it's practically never the case. The closest thing that I see, that you see and this is not even expected from the front-end developers. These are the ones that truly stand out. The people that I would say is the closest to being seniors are the people who realize that, okay, we're going to have to figure out an architecture, an architecture for the code so that we can actually scale this. We need to take decisions based on what tools are we going to allow into the code base because one of the biggest problems of front-end is the diversity of the ecosystem and how ad hoc everything becomes. And this rots the entire code base. We need to decide on practices and standards. We need to figure out how we can deal with uh, uh, sharing a UI language between us and the designers or if we're in the same group, we need to find a way of standardizing our components so that we actually reduce bundling sizes. For extra credit, some of them, as I said, they become experts of optimization techniques, such as, for example, lazy loading assets or splitting things out into chunks of some sort like that, or using uh, like um, progressive enhancement techniques and so forth. These things are absolutely useful, and sure, we can call you a senior if you know all of this stuff, but these same seniors, although they know these extra techniques and patterns, are pointless when it comes to scaling a front-end project. And that is where I argue that if you want to be a true, at least in my definition, and my definition is a lot stricter than the average, so you don't, you can ignore me if you want to, but per my definition, if you're going to be a senior software, a senior front-end developer, you need to know how to scale a front-end code base. And I have to this day never met anybody who can do that consistently. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're looking to become a senior front-end developer and you want to know what you need to learn about JavaScript, you can kind of relax because you can basically just go and Google any list of any tools that you require in order to be a front-end developer and they're all going to be right because the ecosystem is so diverse, uh, but as long as you get the main tools, it's gonna be fine. And then the rest of it is really down to you knowing those tools well enough, because the requirements on you to be a senior front-end developer is they are, in my opinion, almost pathetically low in comparison to what you would expect from a senior back-end developer or like a someone who is able to virtually take charge of an entire project. The, these sorts of things, they practically don't, uh, these requirements, they're almost hilarious 
uh, to talk about in the front end space. There are a lot of people who are really good at specific things such as performance optimization or user experience or accessibility. And these things are great. It's great that you know them, but they are not the thing that go is going to dictate if the project scales or not. That is the real problem. Scaling a front end project is really, really hard. And it's it has more to do with culture and practices than anything else. And so far, I cannot see a consistent stream of quality developers who know how to deal with this. So you can count yourself lucky. It's going to be a lot easier for you to take four years and go and become a senior than it will be for you to go in the front end space than it would be for you to do the same thing in back end or DevOps or anything like that because the bar is so low in comparison. Have a great day.